Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is Dadvice TV Live. And I'd like to welcome everyone who's watching on this Thursday night. Awesome to have you guys here. Now, if you're new, go ahead and say hello in the comments and introduce yourself. We have an awesome community here. Very supportive, very positive, and very helpful which is outstanding. And if you are new, let me quickly, very briefly introduce myself. My name is James. And just over two years ago, I was diagnosed mm -mm 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 -mm. stage five kidney failure. Things did not look good. I had a GFR of eight, not 18, eight. Yep, just a single little digit. I had no clue I had kidney issues. Well, my doctors wanted me to go on dialysis which is something we're going to talk about tonight, but I did not. I instead worked very closely with renal dietitians, my doctors. I got my blood pressure under control. I started exercising. I started eating much, much better, and my overall health improved. And along with that, I reduced some of the burden on my kidneys, which allowed me to improve my overall kidney health and get out of that immediate need for dialysis. Now my kidneys, they're still shot. They're no better today than they were back then, but I'm not pounding them as hard as I used to. Now my kidneys and I get along a little bit better and my GFR is up in the 30s. But more importantly, I don't suffer a single symptom and I pretty much had every symptom there was. Now. That's a quick introduction of who I am. With us tonight, we have a guest back here again. You guys remember Steve? Steve just wrote a book to help people who are either getting ready to go on dialysis or are already on dialysis. His book, brand new, and there's going to be a link on the screen for you to go and purchase a copy of if you like. His book is How to Survive outpatient hemodialysis a guide for patients with kidney failure you guys saw me looking at the book over here because i had to read the whole title it's hard for me to remember it but let's go ahead let's welcome steve here to dadvice tv <laughs> hey steve hey what's going on james awesome so doing? great to have you here thanks, let the man. new thanks people bring me back yeah let the new people who aren't familiar with you know who you are and how they can find out more about you online. Absolutely. As James said, I'm Steve Belcher. I'm a registered nurse. I uh, worked in dialysis for over 30 years. In fact, 33 years. And unfortunately, about two years ago, um, I had a uh, workplace accident with, which rendered me uh, medical retired so i had to retire from dialysis because i couldn't stand up for long periods of time uh as dialysis nurses do so and with people they can find me on urban health outreach media i have the uh shirt on for our main organization urban kidney alliance but we also have shows that we do online through our urban health outreach media uh, platform. So that's how people can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and they also can find me as Steve the Kidney Nurse as well. Yep. And and there's a there's a picture of your book right there, How to Survive. Yeah, I have Out a copy place. right here. Awesome. There <laughs> yeah. we go. <laughs> Let me bring yeah. me back up on the screen. I wanted to leave your book up there. And every sure. so often, everybody, I'll go back to it so you can see the title and that link which if you want a copy of the book, it is go.dadvicetv.com slash Steve, and that'll take you right to the book on Amazon. You can check out, there's, you can read part of it right there on Amazon. You can look at the table of contents, which we're gonna talk about here. And if you wanna get yourself a copy of it, you can. But let's Yeah, and they talk. can also get it from Barnes and Noble as well. Oh yeah, that's right. And actually, it'd be really nice to go visit your local Barnes and Nobles if you guys are interested in getting the book. It's great to support the local businesses. They need it right now. And Amazon, I, I, I shop all the time at Amazon. I love them. 
But, uh, they, they've got enough money. Barnes and Nobles can use a little bit of love. Yeah, I want to say hello to Sugar Ray and uh, uh, Debbie Duff from Texas. I think oh, she's yeah. from Texas. I'm sorry, but Debbie. <laughs> Deb has become a regular. She's a hoot. Her and I have a lot of things that are very similar that we like. And Sugar Ray, Ray over in the UK, his mom went on dialysis fairly recently, and he's been helping her um, kind of adjust to life on dialysis. And he has not missed a single show, and he's very active in our community, which is awesome. Yes, we I've talked with him, uh, Sugar Ray, from the UK. Awesome, very good. Now, let's let's talk a little bit about your book. Sure. First, what got you to decide, you know what? I'm going to write a book about dialysis. Well, James, um, actually the spirit hit me to write that book. But overall, when I worked as a dialysis nurse for, for over 30 years, I seen everything that I talked about, I seen patients go through that experience. In fact, um, I've seen and worked with a lot of patients who started dialysis. They get hit with kidney disease. They didn't even know they had kidney disease. So that's one shock. And then to be to go into this world of outpatient dialysis, not knowing what to expect unless you either know somebody who's on dialysis or you have a friend that works in Dallas or, you know, you just know somebody in that arena. But a lot of patients go into this environment unprepared, uh, high anxiety level because they don't know what to expect. So what I wanted to do is demystify and try to remove some of that anxiety with this book. So if someone was to have this book before they started dialysis, they know what to expect on the very first day when they walk through those doors from signing the admission packet to going to the scale and getting your weight to washing your access if you already have uh, access in your arm to meeting the technician and getting your blood pressure, your vital signs, everything up to starting the treatment and what to expect during that treatment far as the every half an hour vital sign checks, machine checks, to coming off dialysis, what to expect with your vital signs, uh, the, the nurse assessing you. I wanted to arm the, the, the person starting dialysis so they would know once they walk through the door what yep. to expect the first day and through that journey um, of uh, outpatient dialysis in general. And also, I wanted veterans who are already on that may not know everything about their treatment or what is expected of them or what's expected of the facility um, throughout their journey. They may not know about patient grievance or patient's rights and responsibility. So I just wanted to lay everything out. So person see this book, they know exactly, you know, what to look for and how to navigate through this process. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll tell you, I feel the biggest challenge with dealing and living with kidney disease, and that includes kidney failure, is the lack of information and, and to be blunt, poor communication. Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. James. It's a fast track. Yeah, and when I was diagnosed, I was told very little. Even, even once I refused dialysis, I wanted to see a dietitian. I got very little, very unhelpful information. And while I was in the ICU, they wanted to put me on dialysis. And I asked, okay, well, what exactly does this mean? I know nothing about dialysis. And it was, 
maybe a two minute conversation that they were going to put something up in my neck and hook me up to a machine, take my blood, filter it, clean it, put it back in there. And I would do this many times a week for many hours. And I, you know, they're just telling me almost like matter of factly, like hey, you did it a few days, you know, almost every day of the week for a few hours. And I remember asking, uh, for how long, like one week or two weeks, how long? They're like, oh no, 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 for the rest of your life or unless you get a transplant. It was just so blunt and matter of fact, and there was no real material. They did give me a pamphlet when the doctor left the hospital room, and it was a black and white pamphlet on shiny paper with gigantic words, didn't understand anything, fistula, you know, different types of dialysis. Like I was completely lost, and I consider myself a super duper nerd. Um, and then I had to go online, start searching. So I would have loved to have had a book like this, especially with your, 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 you do an introduction to hemodialysis. And then I love that you have an entire chapter on the first day, you know, here's oh, what to expect. Yeah. That, that's what that's a pamphlet the, was for me, a pamphlet with nothing really on it. <laughs> yeah. You know, James, that story you told. I've seen that many times in my career, especially when I worked as an acute dialysis nurse, where acute dialysis nurse, like say for instance, you go in a hospital and you need to get emergency dialysis and it's two in the morning, where I'll be the person that they would call, I, I'll get woken up mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I got to get dressed, come in and set, bring the machine down to ICU and get everything set up. Well, that's happened so many times, and when I meet the patient for the first time, I'm, I'm literally the first person they see as far as when it comes to dialysis. And so right there, I have an opportunity to do some type of education. Mm -hmm. However, it, the education is kind of limited because I don't know if it's going to be a cute episode or chronic episode. Yep. So you don't want to say too much because you don't want to have the patient worrying and, you know, thinking something that may not even happen. It could be an acute episode where you only may do one or two or three treatments and your problem may resolve, mm -hmm. or it could be a chronic condition as a result of long-term diabetes and hypertension which finally caught up and it could be something like that but yeah i try to be the first line of education but after that james you know if it's chronic you know the person goes on many different paths because now you got to talk about getting that catheter put mm -hmm. in the permanent catheter until you get your uh, access in your arm. Then you got to talk about going to get the vein mapping and getting prepped for that. Yep. I mean, there's just so many different dynamics to it. And then some people may even not even know about home dialysis or transplant and not learn about that until six months to a year later when if they mm. had their education in the very beginning, that may could have helped them make um, decisions about their job or their family life or even about going home and doing home dialysis where it may not disrupt the family unit or the, yep. or the family pattern. Yeah, and, and for those that are, are watching that are not familiar with what outpatient hemodialysis is, can you explain what that one is and how it pretty much connects to us? So with outpatient hemodialysis, it's basically kidney dialysis. Uh, you got two types of dialysis, peritoneal dialysis and then kidney dialysis. Outpatient hemodialysis is where you go to an outpatient kidney center like Fresenius DeVita or U.S. Renal Care, and you go into a setting and do your treatment. And when you do... Uh, 
uh, dialysis in an outpatient setting is hemodialysis, where you go three times a week, anywhere from three to four hour treatment, whatever the doctor orders. And you have caretakers there that are taking care of you. Some places, uh, well, some states have different regulations. So here in DC, Maryland, the patient ratio to staff is three patients to one technician or one nurse, where you may go to Georgia and the ratio will be four patients to one technician or one nurse. And so you're depending on a healthcare worker to initiate your treatment, monitor your treatment, and discontinue your treatment. And you're leaving the care all in someone else's hands. Yep. And and with that outpatient where I'm going to a DaVita, they're taking the blood out of my body. It's hooked up to an access. This is not the in the stomach fluid one. This oh, is oh, blood. Oh, no, no, it's not peritoneal. That's something you do at home. Yeah. Uh, you go there, um, you either have a, a, a catheter. In fact, if, you, if I can share with you right quick, the catheter oh, yeah. looks awesome. like something like this. Well, first, it, it, it starts out like this. This is what's called an IJ, and they put this on the side of your neck, and it's, it's a quick access they can get in in maybe 20 minutes tops, maybe less than that. They cut aside, cut an opening right here in your juggler vein, and um, put it in through a sheath, pull the sheath out, and this is stuck in your neck like that. That's temporarily... That's what they wanted to do to me. And so once after that comes out, then they go to the what's called a permacath. And this is the one that goes under the subclavian uh, vein where you see most of the patients have it right here Mm -hmm. sticking out of their chest. And so it's either that or the access in the arm where uh, we're using... 15 gauge needles to stick the access. So that's what hemodialysis entails. Go into the clinic. You either have your catheter or an AV fistula or AV graft, and you do your treatment with the help of uh, technicians or a nurse. Yep. Oh, and so that's why it's even more important to have the understanding before you go there of what's going to happen as well as your other options, you know, home dialysis, um, where you're not hooking up to that kind of machine, the kind where you're, you're, you're doing the fluid and you're, yeah, and, and, and I don't know all the details. Yeah. The, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You got the peritoneal dialysis and you got CCPD or CAPD and the difference between the peritoneal and CAPD is uh, manual exchange, meaning you have a, one of these IV poles and you had a solution mm-hmm. hanging up on a pole and it infuses in your stomach, or at night you're using a cycler machine that does the work for you while you're sleeping. Yeah, and then in your book, you also, not only do you go into the details between the differences of these, how they work to help people understand them and make a decision, and we actually even had um, Warren, or wait, which one? Someone said they were six months in before they learned of home dialysis. Uh, Yeah, it was Warren. So he still knows nothing about home dialysis six months in. You even talk about that in your book, so that they can start educating themselves about that as an option if that's something they want to do. Oh, absolutely. That's in Chapter 6, uh, Treatment Options for Kidney Failure. Uh, I talk about hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. That's right, James. There's no way that Warren, being six months on dialysis, knows nothing about peritoneal or home dialysis. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, this information should have been uh, um, should have uh, been provided to him. Given it to, yeah, it should have been yeah. provided to him when he started, or even before he started, so he can make an informed decision on what 
type of treatment he wanted to do. At least give somebody that option. Yes, you can change modalities, mm -hmm. but see, James, this is the situation, this is the problem where I have with changing modalities. That's great. However, in my career, I've seen several people who knew nothing about home dialysis or mm -hmm. peritoneal that had a job or their own business and they had to make hard choices because the outpatient dialysis facility wouldn't accommodate their work schedule. Mm. So they either had to take a medical retirement or had to quit their job because they couldn't get the right schedule to get, you know, to accommodate their work schedule. So yep. then they not working anymore because the unit wouldn't, um, you know, help them out or whatever the case. And then six months to a year later, they find out they, they could have had home dialysis in the first place. Yep. And, and it all comes down to that education. And, and someone had mentioned your doctor should have explained it. I'll tell you, they, uh, you know, I've asked some kind of off the record, why don't they have these longer conversations? One is that's not what they're trained to do. And number two, their job is to treat an illness, not to take care of you with dialysis. That's a whole separate person um in a way it's like they've passed you off exactly. to dialysis and they almost feel like it's up to you you talk to the dialysis people and and pick the one that's right for you it's not my job and you know now not all doctors are that way but i've gotten you know several many have told me you know that's just the way it is yeah and see you know i'm reading some of the comments and this is a thing, this is an unfortunate thing with kidney disease that the disparity of the disease and the, and the people that are affected the most. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, minorities are affected the most by this disease. And with a lot of people, um, especially people who have lack of resources, lack of finances, lack of education, uh, I mean, you can just go up up the chain, yep. um, they may not be able to do that homework or they may have other multiple issues going on where the kidney disease is just like the linchpin that, um, you know, just I can't take it anymore or they, they, they got to try to understand what's going on with their health. So it, it's unfortunate because uh, you're right. The doctor should be having this conversation, the nurses, yep. the charge nurses. Um, and that, again, was one of the reasons why I wrote this book, to hopefully people who are in stage four, five, um, you know, after they read Dr. Rowe's book and after they passed that um, and they have to go on dialysis, then they could read this mm -hmm. one. Um, because nine times out of 10, uh, if they don't do their research and their homework, nine times out of 10, they're going to be starting at an inpatient, and I mean, at an outpatient unit yep. before they go home. And Carol made a great point here. You know, she says, Hey, they give us books to read, but they're confusing. And that is so true. Um, even talking to doctors, just having a conversation. I remember sitting there, renal this, renal that. I was like, what the heck is a renal? Mm -hmm. I had no clue. And it was hours later before a nurse, her name was Tatiana, I remember her. She said, renal is kidney. And I was like, oh, I'm here and my renals are bad. I had no clue what renal was, renal failure, renal this. And just having that conversation with the doctor, the terminology they use, uh, it just flew right over my head. And so many of them who make podcasts or presentations or they, they help write these brochures or some books, it's not written for a patient, as Carol mentioned, to read and understand. But your book is. It's written yeah. 
by a person, <laughs> you know, not, you know, not that doctors aren't people. I almost see doctors as someone from a different world speaking a different language. You know, it reminds me of the old Charlie Brown commercials. When a doctor's talking, it almost feels like wah, 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 oh, wah, yeah, wah, wah, yeah, the teacher. Yeah, and just a few words pop out. The rest, you don't know what they said. But your book, you know, it's written to, by a person who, you know, it's, well, it's like you've been there. With patients. Yeah, exactly. And you're writing it so that it's easy for us to understand with the information we need, which I think is fantastic. And, and James, it, um, you know, it's ironic that you talked about it because we have a glossary in the back of the book. So yep. I have a glossary that, like, for instance, is from A to Z, and it's the common um, words that you may hear in dialysis, like access. Mm -hmm. it, it talks about what an access is, or anemia, or biopsy, or what an artificial kidney is, or a catheter. So it's packed with uh, information in the glossary, and it also kind of spells the word out. So if you don't know how to pronounce it, you can kind of... Awesome. Like Here, a, let me make that a little bigger there. Whoop, there we go. Yeah, yeah, and there's so many words we can't pronounce when you read it. Nephrologist took yes, me forever. Yes, that's in there as well. <laughs> Aretha um, Poynton? <laughs> Those are all words I've heard so many times. It took me forever to be able to say them. And the word modality. We kidney patients are now used to the word modality. But for most people, that was never in their vocabulary and we had to learn what modality meant. I remember hearing that my first day in the ICU, modality, modality. And I'm thinking, what is modality? Yeah, your treatment like, modality. Yeah, like, I had no clue what all that meant. And of course they're rushing around. We got to do this now. I didn't even really have the time to, to do research. And what I did is I pretty much said, halt, stop. No more needles, <laughs> right. no more. I don't Until understand, understand what's, going, what's on. going on. Exactly. And see, and a lot of people don't get that opportunity because the doctors are running in there so fast and you almost have to, they almost, I don't want to say force you, but it's almost like they force you to make uh, split second decisions because they make it sound so urgent. Exactly. Uh, we we got to do, we got to put a catheter in. Uh, right now, your your blood levels are dangerously high, which they might be, but sometimes I feel like they almost embellish. But the situation is critical, but I think there may be some embellishment um, with what's going on to get the patient to make that decision. Um, so uh, this book... It would help to mystify a lot of uh, unanswered questions that um, patients that may about to start dialysis may have, patients that are on dialysis may have. And I even have a section, James, in the back um, called Online Resources for Patients. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason that I added that was you hear about National Kidney Foundation or American Kidney Fund and uh, American Association of Kidney Patients, which the big groups you hear yeah, about them. Yeah, um, I have the AAKP in here, but I also have smaller organizations that a lot of patients don't know about that don't get a lot of uh, hearsay, like uh, Transplant Journey, uh, that is. Um, run by uh, Jen Benson, um, Kidney Solutions by um, um, Kent Bressler, or you, I got you in here, Dad Vice TV. <laughs> there you go right there. Boom. You know. Well, in your organization, which you started, and for those of you um, that are out there that are not familiar with Urban Health Outreach Media, um, it has a couple other names too. Urban Kidney Alliance? <laughs> well, yeah, Urban Kidney Alliance is the parent company and Urban Health Outreach Media falls under or is a subsidiary of Urban Kidney Alliance. Yep. Uh, Urban Health Outreach Media is the media 
portion of our organization which handles the podcast shows, um, interviews, World Kidney News, uh, online kidney disease education. Yep. And and I feel that I do a lot of videos. And this week I have been live every single night. And I'll tell you guys, mm-hmm. it's kind of exhausting for a one man show. About how many shows on average do you guys do? It puts me, it makes me look like nothing. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of changing up. So I was, I, I was doing about three to four shows a week myself and Mm -hmm. then hosting or producing other uh, shows we have on the network. So right now, um, I kind of took a break, but when I come back next week, I'll have World Kidney News, then we do a show, Mental Health and Me, that I host. Also do a cooking show, The Kidney Cookery, that I host, and then we have another show, uh, Urban Reno talk with Tamika and Steve. Uh, those are the shows that I'm on. And then we have Warriors Quest with Jerry yep. A. Brown, uh, the Lisa Baxter show, uh, Sisters Against Kidney Disease. Yep. We have uh, Kidney is it, Stories too. Yeah. And is Uncle it two Jim. guys, one kidney or something? Yeah. We and, and, yeah, we have a show. Uh, two guys, three kidney. No, there, six kidneys. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, two guys, six kidneys uh, show with guys who met each other online but did home dialysis peritoneal. So that whole show is kind of centered around the uh, peritoneal uh, home dialysis uh, realm of of kidney disease. And then we have a new show with a gentleman, Lamont Reed, called Redefining Renal Disease. Um and he's out in California that had a transplant years ago. And yep. we just try to we try to catch this education from all sectors. Um I know. And people completely that, free. This is yeah, you guys yeah, are like free. me. You're creating this yourself. You guys are, you know, supporting yourselves and creating this and putting it out there. So kidney warriors all around the world, their families, their friends, those looking for a kidney, um, those who know someone who needs a kidney, all of them can come find information, start learning about it again in that easier to understand language. Um, not a doctor with gigantic words that we don't understand is flying over our heads. It's mm-hmm. real people talking about real things that matter to kidney patients. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we got these different shows because each show may not be for everyone. Mm-hmm. Someone may just want to watch um, the Lisa Baxter show. Or somebody may want to see Uncle Jim, Kidney Stories 2, where he talks to people that's in a higher echelon of dealing with uh, this disease from the political standpoint Mm -hmm. of dealing with it. As you know, uh, recently the uh, immunosuppressant uh, bill was passed. Awesome. That was huge. Yeah, yeah, and I want to thank those guys, AAKP. I'm I'm sure a lot of people uh, had a hand in it, but a guy like uh, Paul T. Conway and um, Richard Knight, uh, these guys are uh, the patients and kind of like the board of AAKP who are up there in the, again, I call it the higher echelon of dealing with this disease from the political standpoint. Yep. And, and Ronald here just made a comment, you know, stay off dialysis as long as you can. That's kind of what my stuff is about. Um, since I haven't been on dialysis, I have to, you know, go to people like Steve to talk about it. Uh, mine is more focused on the, what can we do to slow down your decline in kidney function? Because mm-hmm. um, there's no repairing your kidneys. You know, even no, though not. I have gotten so much better and you watch one of my old videos, I I still get people, even this morning, I had someone in there making fun of me. They're like, you look so sick. You're talking so slow. You shouldn't be making videos. But I have in there so you can see just how bad I was and how far I came with diet and lifestyle. But oh, my you're kidneys, inspiration. Yeah, the kidneys are still shot. They're still scarred. They're still shriveled. They're no better today 
than they were two years ago. But but they're not getting any worse. Right, and I'm not I'm not putting as much of a burden on them because I'm eating better. I'm using you know a renal probiotic, Renadil, which you guys work with Renadil also. There we right go. There. Yeah. That right there consumes some of the uh, toxins in your intestine before they go into your bloodstream and then your kidneys need to filter up. Um, I take my renal multivitamin, my pro renal plus D. I exercise, I'm taking my blood pressure medication. Um, so those that have asked, I saw a few people asking, you know, can you improve your kidneys? Oh, I- it, it It's possible for many people to improve your overall health and reduce the burden on your kidneys and improve your kidney lab results, make the symptoms less, or like me, I got rid of them all. I'm When we're done with this, well, when we're done with this, I'm watching a, a webcast on a, on the American Association of Kidney Patients, AAKP, um, about the um, uh, vaccines tonight at seven o'clock right after this. But then after that, I'm getting on the treadmill. I've got to put about two and a half miles on. Uh, a new Star Trek Discovery came out today. I'll be watching it, and then I'll watch something <laughs> else while I'm getting my miles on on my treadmill. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Exercise is, is very important, whether you're on dialysis or not. Uh, exercise is definitely a, a uh, critical factor in oh, just, yeah. you know, your overall being. Even if you are on dialysis, you can still exercise with, let me just make a statement, with the um, uh, approval of your, your physician. But there's many patients uh, that exercise and feel well and, um, you know, improving the quality of the, their life in spite of having uh, kidney disease. Yep, and and I want a, a couple questions. We are sure. starting to move closer towards the top of the hour. Um, someone asked about your military past because you do have you are uh, you know you're one of our servicemen. Yes, yes, I was in the military uh, from 1982 to 1985. The U.S. Army. I went in directly after high school. In fact, James, I signed. Um, I signed up a year earlier, which was called the Delayed Entry Program. So I signed up in the beginning of the 12th grade, or at the end of the 11th grade uh, school year, I signed up. And I, I served three years. I was in Germany. for We yep. talked about that. And I think we were in the there the time. same time. Right, yes. over in Germany. And, and I, I'm I not decided. in the military, though. For everyone that's out there, my dad is, is uh, Air Force retired. I am an Air Force brat. So I was over there eating Kinder Eggs and having a good old time as a, yeah, a kid growing up. And, and Jaeger schnitzel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but the, the one cool thing about the military that I had an opportunity uh, to, to witness and be a part of was the um, Berlin Wall coming down. Oh, yes. Huge. Yeah, yeah, because I actually was on the east-west German border at one time in knee-deep uh, snow and actually facing two east-west German border guards. Uh, you know, it was me, my, my lieutenant, and my uh, section sergeant, and then there's two east German border guards on the other side of the fence. Of course, there's two fences. And it's at night, and you can't say nothing to them. All you can do is mm-hmm. just observe each other. You can't make any type of gesture with your fingers, or any, you can't do anything because you're being recorded mm-hmm. or watched um, as that's taking place. Well, and as a kid, we went to the Czechoslovakian border, saw you know the anti-tank traps, the river, the wall, the towers, and then in the distance a town that you, know, you can just tell it was suffering. Uh, sure. Another thing about you, you recently got an award, a very important award. Oh yeah. Uh, I got it right here. The, uh, the uh, presidential uh, volunteer service award. Um, and I received that from the AAKP. And again, thank, thank you AAKP for, for recognizing me. And these awards are, 
um, broken down into gold, silver, and bronze. And I just happened to uh, get the uh, the gold medal. And I, I mean, I was totally um, uh, oblivious to, to getting this. Uh, I received the email, and I'm not, like I tell this story, I didn't know what the email was. I thought it was just a regular email, and so I kind of bypassed it. And it wasn't until a couple of days later, I went back and really looked at the email and read the, um, the significance of this uh, service award, this volunteer service award, and how it first started due to um, the incident, the tragic incidents behind 9-11. And so when I read that, um, it, it, it really hit me the significance and the importance of this award, and I didn't take it lightly. Um, also, and you know, this is unfortunate with the incident that uh, transpired in Washington D.C. yesterday. Uh, I live in Washington, D in Washington D.C. I'm I'm safe and sound. Uh, everything was contained around the Capitol, so it didn't go out into the neighbor into the uh, neighborhood, but um, I did receive a letter uh, from the President of the United States um, congratulating me on that, on that award. So uh, the award, a certificate, a letter from uh, Donald J. Trump, and this medal came to me. And again, I'm, I'm definitely appreciative of it. Um, I was one of, I guess, I, I believe three or four people uh, who, who won the award for gold. So it was a very small, it was very small um, um, uh, awardees for, for the gold medal then so many for the silver and so many for the bronze. And I was up there with like Richard Knight, Paul T. Conway, uh, Edward J. Hickey. Um, these guys are powerhouse in AAKP. And so when I think about that, uh, I get a little choked up because, uh, you know, my past as far as me coming through in dialysis and, and all the years that I've seen AAKP magazines while I was at work doing dialysis and seeing these guys in the magazines, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight years before even anybody ever heard of me in this journey online, I seen these guys in the magazine and to be um, recognized uh, with a award such as prestige like this, yep. it, it's a blessing and an honor, and I'm, I'm just humbled. It's awesome, and you've done so much. You deserve it, and it's just now, you know, thank you, James. It is absolutely awesome. <laughs> and, and when I found out you got it, I was like, "Holy cow!" And you know, it's it's a presidential award, and I was like, "Did this really come from the president?" It did, and you had the signed letter. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. Yeah, that is just awesome. Now I'm going to bring up Thank your you. book again, just for a few people have asked um, for some information. There's the book right there, How to Survive Outpatient Hemodialysis by yeah, Steve I, won't be, um, Belcher RN. Sorry, go ahead. Now put your name up there in case anyone wants to search. Now, now we have some news about this, about your book. Absolutely. We have a... Uh, a giveaway going on. Um, Kibo, who uh, I work with in the past, um, has uh, was is nice enough to uh, give away or sponsor one book to uh, individual. And all you have to do is uh, you see on top of Jane's screen. Yep. Uh, share this video and. Uh, hashtag, right? Hashtag Steve the Kidney Nurse. And in several days, uh, we will pick a winner. And then uh, once I reach out to you, I'll get your address and provide it to either James or uh, the representatives at Kibo. 
and they'll make sure that you get a copy of my book, uh, yep. How to Survive Outpatient Hemodialysis. Uh, guys, let me just say this. If, if you're not on dialysis yet and you see that role coming in the future or you're on dialysis, um, you won't be, uh, you won't be disappointed with this book. Uh, the, the, um, the foreword is from Dr. Ken Suther, who is also a kidney nephrologist and a kidney warrior himself. He had a transplant. Dr. Kenneth Suther wrote the uh, one forward, and then I had Charles A. Barner, attorney, uh, write the second forward. And he's a civil rights attorney, and he's writing it from the civil rights perspective of health care uh, for everyone. And what's so significant about Mr. Barner is at 16, he was on the Pettit Bridge uh, in Selma, Alabama on Bloody Sunday. Oh. And so throughout that experience, he decided to become a civil rights attorney and he worked right alongside of uh, Congressman John Lewis. So I had two very important people write the, uh, the forward, two forwards, and um, again, you won't be disappointed. Uh, we have uh, some of the uh, chapters, as James mentioned, what is chronic renal failure, mm -hmm. intro to hemodialysis, your first day at outpatient, patient's rights and responsibilities, uh, understanding patient's grievance policy. If someone has an issue, they don't know how to resolve it, this book kind of tells them the necessary steps on resolving that issue because a lot of patients feel if they have an issue with the dialysis unit, they may feel fear of saying something because they may uh, feel like that the unit or the people may uh, retaliate and when I say retaliate, not uh, directly, but indirectly, maybe um, you may fear they may mess your arm up and stick in the needle or, or something mm -hmm. like that or give you uh, the care they should be giving you. I have that. Then I have chapter six, treatment options for kidney failure. Chapter seven, treatment options for kidney failure. Kid so I got a whole chapter about transplant. Um, chapter 8 talks about how to care for your access. Chapter 9 talks about making wise food choices. And, and that's important because the diet the diet is different for those on dialysis. Yes. And, and that's where uh, you may want to try a probiotic uh, such as Renadale when you're making these healthy food choices because probiotics, what they do is they sit in your gut and they eat the bad toxins like uh, uremia and the uronitrogen and it's eliminated through the stools. And it works just like uh, a sorbitol or K-axalate uh, solution that helps eliminate uh, potassium through your stools. Then we have chapter 10, additional important information like going to the dentist stuff like that, uh, sex and, and kidney disease, um, other, like just some uh, issues that a lot of patients may not talk about. Then uh, talk about chapter 11, how to stay healthy. And then chapter 12, I end the book with chapter 12 with coronavirus and kidney disease. Uh, I wanted to end the uh, book with coronavirus and kidney disease because Coronavirus just came out, and there's no information um, outside, I believe, that's in a book like this uh, right now that addresses kidney disease and the coronavirus. And even though by the time you get this book, uh, information changed quickly, but at least this is kind of like a foundation of um of 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 staying well 
when you have the coronavirus or or staying healthy or away from getting the coronavirus if you have chronic kidney disease. Yep. And and you know again about the the giveaway it's being sponsored by Kibo Biotech. They are the makers of Renadil, which is a renal probiotic. And a lot of you may think, well, why can't I just go to Walmart and grab one of those probiotics or go to the dollar store and get one of theirs that they have on the shelves? Probiotics are all different. It's like, it's like the colors of crowns. You get a big old box. That box is 64 that when you were little, you just loved to get. If you were the mm -hmm. one with all those colors, it was awesome. All the colors are different. And your picture, if you grab gray and color the sky gray, your picture is going to look different than if you colored the sky a nice, bright, shiny blue. All probiotics are different. And the ones in Renadil are proprietary blends. And some of them are patented and they go after those things that when we eat, get absorbed in our bloodstream, and then our kidneys have to work to filter it out. So adding something like a probiotic, Renadil, to your renal diet can help reduce the burden on your kidneys and it could improve your labs. And I did a study, Absolutely. my own little test. I got labs, took it for 90 days, three months, and got new labs, and I actually wasn't too good on my diet, and I improved quite a bit. I was actually stuck. I was at the top of stage four. I couldn't get to stage three. I took it. It greatly improved my BUN, which, oh, was so bad. Improved my creatinine, um, improved my, my GFR, and I've continued to take it now for a little over about a year and four months now wow. I've been taking Renadel. Yeah. So it's just one of the many things that, you know, you can learn about from the programs that Steve and his team that I do for those of you that are new out there, you can learn about these. Now, when it comes to supplements, it's always good to talk to your doctor, talk to your renal dietitian about adding those into your diet to make sure there's no issues with medication you take or any restrictions that you may have. But Renadil is one of these ones. Um, diabetics approve it. It's, you know, a lot of the uh, dialysis centers recommend it. So it's one of those ones that's it's, it's very popular for kidney patients to be taken. And Kiva Biotech is the one doing the giveaway. And just to remind everyone, share this video right here. Just go ahead when we're done. Hit that share button, tag it with hashtag Steve the Kidney Nurse. This is how we can find the video when you share it. We got to look for that hashtag. That hashtag has to be there for us to find it. We're going to do a random uh, selection of somebody um, in about five days from now. So in case you're not watching this live, we're still doing the giveaway. Share the video, tag it. We'll reach out to you to get your shipping information and get that all taken care of. And Kibo Biotech, the makers of Renadil, will be sending you, if you're the one picked, a free copy of Steve's book. Absolutely. Absolutely. You won't be disappointed. James, one thing I would like to say is um, Kibo Biotech also uh, instituted a subscription plan. So if anyone is interested in uh, Rena Dill in a subscription plan. They, they, on your first order, you get this, a bottle of Rena Dill and also uh, their Fortis um, um, fiber supplement as well. So, but if you're interested in the, the subscription plan, there is only a few spaces available like 10 spots, and I think they already got five spots or four spots already uh, filled up. Uh, send me an email. I'm sorry, uh, inbox, uh, hashtag Steve the Kidney Nurse, and, or put your information, your email address in the comments. I'll see it, and I'll pass it on to uh, the representative, and they'll reach out to you. I mean, uh, the price is affordable. Uh, it's a three-month subscription plan. If you're not happy with it, you can cancel uh, at no cost. 
and I believe uh, either pay for shipping or shipping may be free. I, I'm not too sure, but uh, it's a good deal, uh, especially if you want to lighten the load on your kidneys. Yep, yep. And and all the little tools that we can do: exercising, staying hydrated, eating better. Um, and I and I see you know JN. He's um, has a few questions about eating. Uh, when it comes to kidney disease, now once you're on dialysis, your diet changes. But before dialysis, there's two things you need to not eat: black licorice and star fruit. Both of those are toxic, um, even to regular people. But their kidneys kind of process out the toxins. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do it for us with kidney damage. Everything else just comes down to portion control. And eating a more plant-based diet has been shown to be better, especially for your pH balance of your body, your BUN, that, that the U part of BUN. Eating a more plant-based diet, you know, picking more items like broccoli, cauliflower, and things like that, and apples, is more beneficial than eating my favorite, and I dearly miss it because I don't get it very often, a ribeye you know, or a big giant yeah, absolutely. Stick. <laughs> and also keeping down the saturated fats, the cholesterol, yeah. your sodium. Um, I saw a comment uh, from Jane and Bill Gandy. They said, what is the name of Rena Dell uh, Pro yep, there it is. But it's, it's Rena, the name of it is Rena Dell. And it's a uh, pro and prebiotic. Yep. And if you're interested in the subscription plan, please reach out to me at... Uh, Steve the Kidney Nurse on Facebook or Steve Belcher RN on Facebook. You can send me a message uh, or you can put it in the link on uh, Jane's uh, Facebook Oh yeah, just put page. in the comment of this and we'll, we'll, we'll get to you. Okay, yes, please, if yeah. you're interested. Yeah, so. <laughs> there's Sugar Ray James and his rib eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So we are coming to the top of the hour. Sure. For those of you that are new, this is just an example of some of the information you get. Steve and his team, lots of shows throughout the week. I do shows, go to dadvicetv.com and you can find the schedule. Those of you looking for the food list, I have a food list that I've used from being stage five up to stage three that you can download and print out or carry on your phone. On dadvicetv.com, it's completely free. You don't, if you see something you got to pay for, that's a scam. Run from it. Also, I just did a show, I think last night, no, the night before last, with renal dietitian Jen Hernandez. And there's a link to her list and all sorts of tips to help those of you that are trying to figure out what to eat. I noticed there was a lot of questions about it, so I wanted to make sure and point that out. Can I just make one more comment sure. before you go? Yeah. Um Kidney warrior Tanisha Gilliam Jones out of Houston, Texas, a transplant warrior who has her own um, her own um, group called Not Your Average uh, Kidney, and she I, I'm, I'm doing a watch party and she's willing to sponsor her organization nonprofit is willing to sponsor one book as well. So awesome. we'll be doing two. Um, Two giveaways, one from Kibo and one from Not Your Average Kidney uh, by uh, Tanisha Gilliam uh, Jones out of Houston, Texas. So that would be two book giveaways, I just wanted to say. Awesome. That is great. All right. Thank well, you, uh, Tanisha. We're coming up at the top of the hour, and I'm going to be jumping over to the aakp.org website to out. watch yeah to watch their uh live webinar about um the vaccine i am eager i just heard this morning on the news that i may be able to get it as early as the last week of this month here okay. in ohio that's when people with chronic illnesses will be eligible to get it now of course we got to get enough of them here and finding a place to go and get it Oh, right. still a whole bunch of challenges, but I am eager to get vaccinated, start protecting myself so that a little less burden, a little less worry, because worry and stress is not good for us. Yeah. All right, hopefully, Steve. James, uh -huh. one day that I said, hopefully one day you can get it at your physician's office like they get a flu shot. 
Oh, I think that I think that'll be the future. Is you'll go in, get your flu shot and coronavirus shot. Probably, I'm going to guess yearly or every so often once we know how long this lasts. All, All right. right. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Hey, thank you. I appreciate Great you, Great information. Jay. Let me bring your book back up there on the screen so people can see it. It's How to Survive Outpatient Hemodialysis, a guide for patients with kidney failure. And there's a link right there, go.dadvicetv.com slash Steve, where you could go ahead and order your own copy. And when you order a copy, not only are you getting this book, but you're helping support kidney warriors who take the time, the effort to create books like this. You're supporting Steve. So don't hold out expecting just to win a copy. <laughs> you know, I don't want people yeah, to think yeah, like, hey. Please, please support the cause. <laughs> Yes, and and if they buy it, um, is there a recommended way to buy it so that it goes up the list and gets recommended more often to other yeah, kidney Amazon. Wires? There we go. Go to and that's what that link goes to. When you go to go.dadvicetv.com slash Steve, it goes there. There's also a link in the description of this video. If you go to dadvicetv.com, you click on the live shows at the top of the menu, scroll down, you'll see Steve's name. And it's got his appearances here, again, links to his book on every page that has information about Steve. You haven't even seen that, Steve. I, I created that this morning. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Man, I will be back. Thank you for your support. Oh, always, Steve. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think highly of you, James. I appreciate you. Man, you're real respected in the in the kidney community, man. Keep doing oh, what you're doing. Thank you for that. Hey, you guys too. You and your entire team, Lisa, all of them over there. Jared, gotta make sure I name I name a few of them that I at least talk to quite often. Sure. All right, everybody, I'm off of here. I'm gonna take a few days break. Help maybe a cousin buy a car because I love car shopping, and I will be back next week with more information. And don't forget, share this video, hashtag Steve the Kidney Nurse, help spread the information, help other kidney patients know they're not alone uh, trying to figure this all out all by themselves. And Absolutely. you might even win a free copy of the book. All right, everybody. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you so Abby. much. And I'll see you next week on more videos. Mm -hmm.